Right, I'm going to try recording this one for the third time now, okay? Hopefully I've got all my weird animations and spelling mistakes and stuff all out of the way, okay? So before you go through this video on quick sorts, make sure you've been through your implementation on the merge sort and you're really familiar with how recursion is used in with multi, multiple branches, all right? So while you go over that, I'm going to munch a bit more chocolate, all right? And here we go, quick sorts, all right? So basically by the end of this video, you should know two different ways of how you can use a quick sort but also by comparing the second method to the first one, you should be able to actually see why a quick sort is quite is, is very efficient. Okay, so quick sort was developed by this um, very smart individual over here, um, Sir Hall. Uh, you can look up the history of the quick sort. He was in Russia, working at a university over there on uh, like a Russian English dictionary or something, and he saw there were some problems um, in terms of efficiency with i think it was a merge sort or an insertion sort and then he came up with this idea and then when he came back to the uk he refined the idea um, and it's um, quite a popular method for sorting okay when you look online at quick sorts you'll find there are loads of different versions okay um, there we're going to be talking about something called a pivot okay and lots of algorithms for beginners show a version where the pivot is the first element in the list um, the, I'm going to start off with that version and then I'm going to show you an alternative version um, following that, okay? So basically, I've got my list at the top that uh, CBFADE, okay, the first um, uh, uh, table there, all right? Now, what we're doing is we're identifying a pivot, okay? So my first element in the list, which is holding C, that's going to be my pivot. Remember, the pivot is the thing that we flip about, okay? So once I've got my pivot over here, I'm going to start flipping all the items in that are smallest to the left of the pivot and everything as large is going to go to the right of the pivot okay now um, we just go through this original list in the order that it's in okay so b is smaller than the pivot so it goes into the left list f is larger than the pivot goes into the right list a is smaller than the pivot goes into the left list so on and so forth right now once we've done that what we're going to do is we're going to look at those individual left and right lists that we've that we've created and we're going to identify pivots in there so the leftmost element, uh, element becomes the pivot, and hey presto, guess what we do? We then start to do that same, start flipping smaller items to the left and larger items to the right. All right, you can see straight away how this now suddenly becomes a self-similar problem, which is why I was talking about recursion, because all we're doing is we're identifying a pivot, identifying items that are either larger or smaller, and moving them into new lists, which to the left or to the right of the original um, of the pivot okay so b in this case b was the pivot a is smaller and that's why a now goes into a list on the left hand side now in this case a is in the list by itself it is the first element and a becomes the pivot there are no other items in the list and therefore this must be sorted okay and actually what's happening as we go along as you can see that as we're creating as we're moving elements to the left or the right and we start to um, uh, then create find new pivots and move those um, uh, and then split that sublist into smaller sublists. We are actually placing all the elements in order because we went A, B, C, D, E, F like that. Okay, so this is the introductory version that you see in quite a lot of books, um, bringing um, you know introducing quick talk to the masses. All right. The problems with this introductory version is that basically when you have these recursive calls on a large data set, you're going to end up with a stack overflow. As you keep, um, as you identify the pivot and you start making a left list and a right list and then create a new pivot and have another left list and another right list, okay, you will run out of memory. So I'm going to show you a way that you can overcome this, all right? Before we do that, I'm just going to go over a bit more terminology. So you've heard, you see me talking about the pivot, okay? Um, you will also hear people when they talk about um, quick sorts partitions. So we have our pivot over here. Uh, I think I've identified pivot as the last animation. So we have our pivot over here. All right. When we cut the list up, we start talking about partitions because we're going to be working in a partition on the left or the right. And then we also, you will hear people talking about indices or pointers. I will use the phrase pointer just to make it easier to remember that you're talking about the left pointer and the right pointer, okay? Indices become a bit um, tricky. So remember the pivot is a thing that we're gonna flip around and we're gonna create partitions on either side of the pivot, all right? Now, um, this version of quick sort sorts in place. So that means that if I have an array or a list or whatever it is, I'm just literally working on that data structure. I'm not generating 
new data structures every time I make a recursive call. Therefore, by reducing the space complexity, I'm increasing uh, the, the efficiency of, of the algorithm. All right. So here I have, I have a, a list of names. Those names are not in order. Okay. So I have my left um, uh, pointer and I have my right pointer on the other side. What I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start comparing the element at the left pointer to the element at the right pointer. And if the element at the left pointer is larger than the element at the right pointer, I'm going to swap them around. Okay. So remember, I'm starting at element zero and my element on the right hand side is going to be the length minus one. So Bob is smaller than Taj, so Bob can stay where he is. I'm going to now increment my left pointer, so it now points to, L, uh, it's now equal to one. Okay, so list one is Joe. Joe is smaller than Taj. Anne is smaller than Taj. Tom is larger than Taj. Now what we need to do now is actually swap the two items around. Okay, so um, list four equals Taj. All right, and then whatever that uh, right pointer, list right pointer now becomes Tom, okay? I flipped the color just to show you which pointer is now moving, okay? So the right pointer now starts to move instead and the left pointer is gonna be fixed. So my, my right pointer is gonna decrease by one each time to move to the left, uh, move toward the left, okay? So Ra Taj is now larger than Rath. Guess what needs to happen? They're gonna swap around again, okay? and I'm gonna keep moving my left pointer now. So every time I do a swap, okay, I start moving the other pointer, okay? So, uh, oh, Gil is smaller than Taj, Abe is smaller than Taj, Ali is smaller than Taj, Lee is smaller than Taj, Zim is larger than Taj, so we're gonna swap them around, then I'm gonna move my pointer, and now actually my two pointers are equal to each other, so I'm gonna stop. Basically what I've done is I've just identified my pivot and also I've placed my first item. Okay, so Taj is in the correct place in the list. Yeah. Now I've got a pivot, I've actually got two partitions. I have my left partition on one side and I've got a right partition on the other side. What I can then do is I can now start, um, I can make a recursive call. I'm gonna pass my, um, my minimum value um, to my pivot minus one to my uh, first recursive call, and I can pass my pivot plus one to the maximum value over here to my uh, second recursive call, yeah? So let's just look at the right-hand side for an example. So Zim is larger than Tom. We've got swap items, and then once I move the right pointer, the pointers now overlap. So I've just identified another pivot, okay? Zim is a, is a, a list of length one, so if we think about base cases, I'm probably going to waste my time trying to do any moving around in here because it's obviously clearly in order. So you can see um, very quickly, I've just placed three items in the list. Similarly, if I look at the left hand side, um, I have no idea why that has just jumped straight to there. But uh, basically, Bob, Joe and are all smaller than Leah, but Raz is larger than Leah. So obviously we need to swap. Leah and Raz around, and then I can start moving my left pointer along, or sorry, my right pointer, and I'm gonna do another swap. Gil is smaller than Leah, Abe is smaller than Leah. My two pointers meet, and therefore, uh, I've just now identified another pivot. If I then take my right partition, and I look at my right partition, Raz is uh, a partition of size one, therefore it must be in order. So you can see I'm very quickly placing items, so by identifying the pivot, when the pointers overlap, right? I'm um, basically placing items into the correct place in the list. And I can continue then performing the sort action on that partition on the other side. Now, um, you can see over here how this is a recursive procedure, okay? Um, and it's very, very efficient, okay? So how does a quick sort work? Basically, it's a recursive divide and conquer approach making use of multi-branching. Remember, we're moving the left pointer along until the right item is smaller than the left and we swap them around and then we start comparing from the right and then when we the same thing happens and we swap items again and we start moving from the left and we keep doing so until the left and the right pointers meet and then we can rep repeat the recursive call for that partition on the left and the partition on the right of the pivot and you should be able to understand why a quick sort is efficient because basically by using the second technique I've shown you I can operate on the same list without having to basically make 
um, when I'm making my recursive calls, pass, creating new copies of the list out of each of the partitions I've identified, and therefore the space complexity is being reduced, and therefore my algorithm is more efficient. Okay, next video coming up is going to show an algorithm on how a quick, or, or, well, it's going to give you an algorithm on a quick sort. Okay, um, and here I am, I'm going to try and turn off this uh, video thing again. Where are we at? Here we go.